Uh, okay, we're gonna start on time today for the first time, sort of. Um, so today we're gonna be talking more about delegation, uh, how exactly delegation works, how do we actually implement it in an app. And the first thing I ask you guys to do is to please um, download this project. It should say six six MB. Uh, if it says like 64 or something else that you haven't refreshed correctly, you got to refresh the page and then download like demo three starters that zip that it should match that exactly. Um, and also please fill out our feedback form. I'll be pumping this again by the end of lecture today. Uh, but we love to fe hear feedback from you all. Um, if you have any opinions about how we're running this course, whether we go slower, faster, how are the assignments, all of that. And you guys would also receive extra credit if you fill it out about two points. Um, and the way it works is you take a picture of the email that you get after you submit the form and then you submit it to CMS. So under CMS right now, there should be like a submission saying like, um, midpoint submission feedback form for this course. And so you just got to submit a screenshot of that form and then you'll get the extra credit for it. Also, uh, this form is totally anonymous. So we don't ask you for your name, that idea or anything like that. Um, so the screenshot is so that we know that you're the, you're one of the people who submitted it, but we don't know which response you gave. So it's still be, it'll still be anonymous if you decide to submit the extra credit. Um, and yeah, I'll also send an announcement for this. So if you guys, uh, don't fill it out now, don't worry about it. It'll be in the announcement and I'll pub it again later. Uh, but it's expected to be due this Sunday. So please look out for that. Um, and also project three will be due this coming Monday and project three will basically be like this whole like demo that we're gonna be running through today um but yeah that's enough oh and also mentorship mentorship uh forms so i haven't gone through matching so the form is still technically up in case anybody is interested last minute like like filling it out today um it's in one of the ed posts but i'll be matching them sometime tomorrow uh i just didn't get to it today because i didn't have the time but the mentorship pairing should be out by tomorrow afternoon so uh if you haven't filled them out please Feel free to fill them out now. And yeah, okay, so let's get started with this lecture. So first, I'm gonna download this zip file. Oops. Oh. Yeah. So if you look in your downloads folder after you download it, it should say demo three starter. This is just gonna be some starter code for our app. Uh, if you open the folder, it should say something like that. Demo three starter, and you could trust and open. I promise it. There's no virus in this. And when you open it, it should look something like this, with like an app delegate, scene delegate view controller, cat press view controller, and cat objects. So if I run it, it should also look like this. Oh, let me like make myself. <laughs> If you're on your app for the first time, it should look something like this. And when you click on the cat, my cat, you, it should say I'm supposed to present. And if you click on edit cat, it should say I'm supposed to push. Is everybody up to this point? Is anybody getting any errors? Remember, you just download download the project from, from the course website. Under lecture demo, should be a zip file. And then once you open that zip file, it'll say something like demo three starter. It'll be a folder here. And then you can just open this workspace, the blue, the blue file right there. And it should take you right to this, to this layout, this code layout that we're all somewhat familiar with now. No, this is demo three starter. So make sure to refresh this page. Um because I think, yeah, make sure to refresh this, refresh this page because I just uploaded, I just uplo uploaded this file like an hour ago. So the changes might not be immediate. But once you refresh this page, download the project and run it, it should look something like this. And I'm going to go through the code that I wrote so far so you guys understand what we're doing here, but it should all be somewhat familiar. So is it art? L6 start. Does anybody else say L6 start? Yeah. 
Yeah. Good. Okay. But anybody else having any, any issues, any errors? Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm going to go a little fast on this lecture or this demo because um, there's a lot that we have to cover. So try to try not to get lost. But first thing we're going to go over is this scene delegate. Uh, in my scene delegate, I have my if let window scene stuff. Uh, Alden and I briefly went over this earlier, but basically what this allows me to do or was, uh, what it allows me to have is this title here at the top, my cat. So you don't have to follow what I'm doing, but I'm just going to restart it and comment it out. Actually, it's going to give me an error, I think. Yeah, well, you can see the title isn't there anymore, which is one of the main things. So adding these couple lines of code that should already be in your scene delegate adds that title alongside with setting the root view controller as a UI navigation controller. So by setting it to be a UI navigation controller, not only are we allowed to give it a title to give each if each view controller a title, but we could also now push and present view controllers without any issues. So that's what scene delegate does. And I'll show you how we push and present stuff later on. Uh, but that's scene delegate. Scene delegate is just setting up the window, um, allowing us to have a title and allowing the root view controller to be a navigation controller. So now in the view controller, here we have, this is the view controller, the my cat, this screen itself is the view controller. Uh, it has a cat image button, which is that, that this is my cat, this is this, this button. And you can tell it's a button because of the way it flickers when you click it. So it's not a UI image view, but a button. Um, and then we have the cat label below that called Kimba. And then we have this variable cat object. And I made it to be a cat named Kimba, whose image is cat3. So these, what these uh, reference is the name first of the cat and also like the image of the cat. So the way I'm storing the images uh, is through this assets file. So you should also have these same images. You should have like a cat1, cat2, and cat3. Our goal today is to present, is to push a new view control, or yeah, to present a new view controller that looks kind of like that one over there. It's called B. We want to present a view controller that looks like that, and then choose one of the three bottom images to then replace that image in A. So we kind of want to replace the image and update, like kind of like change our and update our profile image, or the cat profile image in this case. Um, and to go into what a cat is in my in my project, we have this class cat that has two variables, a name and an image, which are both a string. And every class needs an initializer function, which basically tells the project how, or tells the object cat how to be created. So these initializers, I need to pass in as parameters, right? I need to pass in some parameters into this initializer in order to make a cat object. And that's what I do here. In line 13, I pass in the name and I pass in an image, image cat three. If I were to change this to like cat two, then my cat will change like here on the left because they all have different images. So cat one would be like something like that. It would be that. And when I set it back to cat three, it goes back to normal. So that's how the, this is how we're actually setting up the image. And I'll show you that later on. And then I also have the change name button here at the bottom. Just a, just another button here. And then in my view did load, remember this function only runs once throughout this app's life cycle. So whenever, when the app is first running, this is the set that's gonna get loaded. So I set up the title. I set up the background color here in my view did load. I set the image for my cat image button and I do the translate auto resizing masking constraints. Um, I add the target, add a target self with the selector present view and here, the function is defined below present view. So present view right now is saying like, I'm supposed to present, which we're going to change the behavior in a second. And then I have my cat label here, Kimba. I translate to be false. Uh, I set the text. So I set the text to be the cat dot name. So I have this cat object and then I set the text to be cat dot name, which is this name Kimba. That's how it's being set up. And the font is just a system font of size 30. And I'm adding that to the sub view. And then the change name button, I set a title to be edit cat. I set the background color to be blue. I set the radius, corner radius of this button to be five, five pixels. And then I add the target push view, which is also defined here at the bottom. 
my constraints for this uh for this um for this button is down here i center it along the x-axis i set its bottom anchor to be equal to the views safe area layout guide that bottom anchor and then i set its width anchor to be equal to half of the of the views width that's what this view dot multiple the view dot width anchor and multiplier mean i'm setting it to be half of the width of my screen the width of the button is half the width of my screen um, and going top down uh, through these constraints, my cat image, my cat image button is centered along the x-axis. I give it a top anchor being equal to the safe area layout guides top anchor. And then the width is equal to the views width also divided by half. And same goes with the height. And if I didn't have these, then my image would be like really, really large. So before I didn't have these constraints in the last project, but because my picture is like a lot bigger than um, then the screen itself, it's many more pixels wide. I have to add these constraints, uh, the width to the width anchor and height anchor. So by adding these constraints, oh yeah. Oh yeah, so multiplier sets, uh, it, multi it basically multiplies the thing that you're constraining by. Um, so I guess this cat image button width, so the width of my cat image button, which is that image right there, is equal to the views width multiplied by by this constant it's being multiplied by 0.5 yeah so it's not it's just half of the screen so this yeah you multiply you you set like um and you you compare it to some other anchor in this case i'm comparing it to my views with anchor and then i'm multiplying it by like this multiplier constant that i gave it which is 0 0.5 so i'm saying my button is going to have the width half the size of my screen on any on any screen that way, like my, my image will grow. It's not going to be that size on, on like an iPad. It'll grow if the width increases and it'll shrink if the phone is smaller. Say it's like iPhone like five or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The height. Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm setting both. I'm setting the height anchor to also be equal to the, the views with anchor. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If it were height, then it'd look really wonky, probably. If I think her. it'd probably look like yeah, look like that, which is not what we want. Mm -hmm. Um, like the ratio of the image. I believe there is. There's a way you could do like, um. In UI, in image views, there is a way by saying like that scale. It's like you, you could set, there's this property that scale, I think that you could set to be like dot, dot fill, autofill or something like that. It's, it's like, it's a property of UI image views. It's, I don't remember off the top of my head, but there is a way to scale it so that if you set the width, then the height automatically like fits, like it automatically scales. I'm, you might be able to do it for, for like an image button as well. Maybe like that image button dot image. I just, I, I don't know how to access the image view from here right now, but there's probably a way to access that image view of the button. And then like, once you access that image view, you could access the property like dot scale or something and then equal it to dot fill. And so like, it'll scale and like, like fill the whole like image view or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I, if you come back to me after that, I could probably find it, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but for now, these images just look like that. This is what the view controller looks like. Is there is there any other questions anybody else confused about like how the view controller is set up? Okay, cool. So the first thing we want to do, oh, also, I guess, yeah, let me go over this cat present view controller as well. So as you notice, I have two view controllers in my in my app. So this other cat present view controller is going to be the view, the view controller that I'm going to present when I press on on this on this cat button. Eventually, I'm going to do that. I'll show you how I do that. Um, but in this other cat present view controller, I have like a, also like a cat image view. It, it looks like B. It basically looks like B over there. I have a cat image view, uh, cat one button, which is the, it's the it's a. So there's a cat image view on top, and then below that, like immediately below that, is the cat one button, and then to the left of it is the cat two button, and then to the right of it is the cat three button, over there on B, and in that on the on the on the chalkboard over there, 
So I'm going to present that view. And those are my, th those are my four images. And my save button is something that I'm going to implement later on, but right now I don't have set up. So we could actually delete that for right now, the save button. You don't need it. Even if you don't delete it, it won't cause you any issues. But right now we only want four things on my screen. And in my view did load, I'm setting the cat image view const um, constraints to be false. Um, the cat one button I'm setting to be an image. So the way you set images on buttons is by doing cat like button dot set image and then the image that you want four dot normal, meaning that for the state of that button when it's normal, which is basically like its entire state, you're setting it to be like this specific image. So in this case, the specific image I'm setting it to, that button on the, uh below that UI image view is is going to be cat one, and the next one's going to be cat two, and then the next one's going to be cat three. So it'll it'll be more clear when I actually present this view, but those are my three buttons that are also images. And then my constraints. Yeah, I'll go into these constraints when I actually present that view. But it's just some constraints. And yeah. I also create these constants, just a heads up. I, the way you're usually, you're usually supposed to create apps and constrain them is by creating like some constants that you then use within your constraints. So for example, my, my ratio defines like the multiplier. So you remember how before I had it as 0 0.5 of, of the width of my screen. So my ratio allows me to change that to 0 0.45 because uh, if it were half of the width of my screen, then like they would kind of, the two images on the bottom over there at the very bottom on B would overlap a bit. So I, I decrease it to 0 0.45 and it'll decrease it for all three of those bottom, bottom image buttons. So yeah, but usually when you have like a lot of different numbers, you don't really want these different numbers floating around. You usually want to like give them a name. Like I, I have padding, I have top padding, and then I have the ratio constraint. And that, that way it just looks cleaner. But yeah. So let's get into actually writing some code. So the first thing I want to do is present this view controller. So the, I have this other view controller, cat present view controller, right? But how do I actually present it? So if you guys recall, the way we present view controllers we call present. And then we say, we we put in the view controller that we want to present, which in this case is going to be cat present view controller. And it's going to be true. So this line is actually like very important, specifically like with this, the way we create a cat present view controller object. If you notice here at the end, I have these two parentheses. What those two parentheses mean is that I'm creating an instance of my cat present view controller object. So you can think of the view controller itself as it's like as a screen. And so what I'm saying here is I have to create my screen first. I have to like by by calling these two parentheses, um, or by putting in those two parentheses, I'm basically calling my view did load function. It's almost it's the same thing almost. So I'm triggering like all these other lines of code to run alongside with like setting up the constraints. So that's creating the instance of my view controller. And I'm gonna delete this print statement because I don't need it anymore. So let's see if this works. So it should look something like this. However, I am missing something in my view. I think, okay, yeah, I think I know why it's, okay, so that's the first, that's the first error that we're gonna, that we're gonna try fixing. But as you can see, we have like these three buttons and you can tell they're buttons again by if you like clicking them and you can see the background kind of goes dark. So that's when you know they're buttons. And the first thing we wanna do is, actually get that image up there. So when I click on, on, on my cat, I should be getting that image there at the top here in B. So the way I'm gonna do that is by creating this initializer. So in my view controller, you know that we have like between these two parentheses, I have nothing right now. So that basically means I'm not passing from, from my view controller, I'm not passing any new information to my to my cat present view controller. 
And I want to change that. I want to, I want to pass in my cat, the cat object that I'm working with right now. So here my cat present view controller. I'm going to create an initializer. In it. And in this initializer, what I want to pass in is going to be a cat. I want to pass in like a cat. So I'm going to say, let cat, cat. Actually, I don't think I need let cat of type cat. And now here in my initializer, when I when I initialize this this view, this object, I'm gonna say cat image view dot image is equal to UI image named cat dot name dot image. So that was a lot of lines of code. That was a lot of like code right there. So what I'm saying here is I have a cat image view here at the bottom. I have a cat image view, but its image isn't set. So when I initialize this view controller, I'm passing in a cat and I'm gonna grab that cat's image. Cause if you guys remember in my, every cat object comes with like an image. So I should have specified this variable more clearly, but the image corresponds to the image name here in assets. So cat one, cat two, cat three, those strings are literal like image strings. So that's what I'm gonna be using here. And I say cat image that image is equal to a UI image with that image name. So after I do that, I want to say, actually, I think that should be it. And you'll see if, if you guys are, are getting the same error as I am, you should be able to just click it and then click fix. And it should add all of this like required init code. Basically, this is another error. This is another issue that comes up with, with not using storyboard layout. So I have to say, I have to say that um, I'm not passing in a coder and I'm actually writing my own init function, but it's just a required thing whenever you make an init function. It's, you don't really have to worry about it that much. And you also notice that it's yelling at me because super.init isn't called on all paths. So basically I just have to call super.init here, super.init. And I have to call nib name and bundle. No, no. And the reason I, I have to make both of these things know here is also because I like a nib name and bundle are basically two things that combine lay out the constraints for my view. And like we said in the beginning of this course, we're going to be constraining our things ourselves here in the bottom, like in the NS layout constraints to activate stuff. So we don't actually need these two things. We're going to pass in super dot in it nil for both of these things because we're telling our, our code that we don't need we don't have any other files that set up the constraints. Like we're the ones setting up the constraints within our code. So after you do that, you should now be able to run it and then get another error here, missing argument parameters for cat and cat. So now here, like I said earlier, we didn't have parameters, but now we're requiring, we're requiring our, our, our um, cat presented view controller object to take in some cat object. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna click on this error. I'm gonna say fix, and I'm gonna pass in that cat that we that we made up here earlier. This cat, cat. Okay. And then when I run it again, when I click it, I get I get that that cat image, which is exactly what we want. Are we all good up to here? And basically. I basically just pass in a cat into my view controller. And then in my cat presented view controller here on line 21, I created this initializer that sets up the image to be that cat image. And I also added this required init because it always is necessary whenever I write an init function. All right. So after I do this, now what I want to do is make it so that when I click one of these buttons, it changes like this, this image up here, because the goal is that once I click one of these buttons up over here, I'm able to change this one, like the, the actual image that appears here. That's the goal. That's going to be delegation. Um, but for now, the first thing we want to change is like this, this image up here. So how do we do that? So first I'm going to create a function. I'm going to create a function at objective function um change 
actually a uh, cat button. We'll create this function cat button, which is exactly what I'm going to be tying to all of these. Remember to also put it like within within my cat present view controller here. So it's like here at the bottom. This is like the very last parentheses. So I'm putting it above that. That way this function belongs to the class. And then I'm gonna copy and paste my cat button thingy. And I'm gonna add this function as a target to all of my, I'm gonna add this function as, uh, I'm gonna add to my buttons, this function as a target. So cat one button dot add a target. So action selector cat button for dot normal. I mean, touch up inside. And since I'm doing this for all the ones, I could basically just copy and oh, I copy and paste this line of code to every other every other one of these lines. So cat two, cat three. And so now I have a function that's being called every time I click on one of these buttons. And it's the same function shared amongst three buttons. So I just added these lines of code, 40, um, 45, and 50. They're all basically the same, except I changed like this thing in the front first. So this is, we're doing this for the first time. We're tying multiple, multiple, multiple buttons to the same function. And so another question comes up with how do we like differentiate these different buttons? Cause if I click this cat button, it's going to be different than if I click like this one on the left and this one on the right. So we're actually going to add another line of code to these three buttons. And it's going to be cat one button dot tag is equal to zero. I'm going to do the same thing here. Cat two button dot tag is equal to one. And then cat three button dot tag is equal to two. So every one of these buttons, every button object also comes with its own tag, which is how we're going to differentiate between these buttons. And so once I added that tag, that tag, uh, um, that tag property, I can now go back to my function here at the bottom that I made. And my cap button isn't actually going to take in nothing. It's going to take in a sender this time. So I'm going to say sender UI button because the sender is basically going to take in like whichever button to, uh, pass, whichever button called this, this cat button, whichever button was the sender to this function. And I'm going to say if sender dot tag is equal to zero, if sender dot tag is equal to zero, then I know the button I press is this one here at the bottom. So if it's that one, then what do I want to do? I want to change that, that UI image up here. And my, my UI image view is called cat image view. So I'm going to say cat image view dot image. It was a UI image uh, named. And I know it's cat one because, because that's the first cat, right? I think. So I think it's like cat one. Yeah, that's cat one. Okay. So I'm saying the cat image view dot image is, is going to equal this new image now named cat one. I'm going to copy and paste this code and replace the tags respectively and change this other thing here. So all I did here is I'm passing in a sender now to my, to my, to my button function cat button. And the sender is going to be like the individual button that the, the individual buttons that are tied to my function. So I have three buttons that are using this function. One, two, three. And each button has a different tag. So this one up here has a tag equal to zero. To the left has a tag equal to one. And to the right has a tag equal to two. So I basically differentiate between those tags. And if it's zero, I set the cat to be one. If it's one, I set the cat to be two. And if it's two, I set the cat to be three. It's kind of confusing the numbers. I should have rename them, but that's how they are for now. And then if I run all of this, it should work like this. Yeah. Yeah. So three, four, okay. Okay, yeah. So to, to restate what I changed with my buttons, I added this uh, cat one, 
cat one button dot tag and I added a target. Um, and I basically added those same two lines for all of my buttons. I added a target and then I added a target and then set a tag. Is anybody is anybody getting any errors on anything? Yeah. Does it look like this? Um. Wait. Let me see. Do you mind bringing your? Let's see. Oh yeah. So you when you when you have that error, click the error and press on fix, and it should add it should add this required in it here at the bottom that you might have not had earlier. You good? Wait. So is everybody up to? You? Are we good? We're good. Oh, sorry. It didn't work. Why? Um. What's is there an error? Or like. Try to that. Just run it again to see if it works. Or if not, um, come to me after class if it like doesn't doesn't keep working. Okay. So after getting to this point, now the next big thing that we want to do is actually change this this cat image here. So that's gonna be a whole task on its on its own because that's gonna be a form of delegation. So the way we've been passing information so far has been from A to B over here. So we have this image here and we're passing it to B. But now what we want to do is we want to choose one of these images that changes this, this UI image view. And whenever we click one of these images, we want it to change, we want it to change this image here. So how do we actually go backwards? When we set up this image over here, remember we created an, an instance of B with a parenthesis. We created an instance of this uh present cat view controller. Or package on neutral or whatever. We created an instance using like these parentheses here. <laughs> but we're not creating an instance of anything when we go from B to A. We're we're like A is already always existing there. Like that view controller behind it is always there. So how do I actually like change information to a view controller that already exists? And that we do by delegation. So you could think of A and B. You can think of A as like the chef and B as like the, the customer. So if you're a customer walking into like a restaurant, you, you're given a menu, right? You're given a menu, maybe it's an Italian restaurant and you're given a menu for pasta, pizza, whatever. And so you don't actually know how to make any of this pasta. You don't know how to make pizza, but the chef does. So the chef in this case is this. Before. So you as a customer, you ask the chef, hey, can you make me like, a pizza. And again, you don't know how to actually make these things. You're given a menu that says like make pizza. You're in a menu with a function that might say make pizza. And then the chef is the one that actually defines what that what that make pizza function is. So the chef is going to say exactly what how to make that pizza. But you're just going to be defining what that function name is. You're going to be defining what the task, what the thing is that you want to you want it to name. So the menu in this case is the same thing as a protocol. I definitely did not spell this right. I think I feel like it looks kind of weird, but you got what I mean. Like the menu, the protocol belongs to B, this B controller, and A is going to be the one that actually tells. Uh, that actually defines what that function defined by the protocol is. So let me, let me actually write that into code. So, <laughs> all right. So, okay. The protocol is like, again, like the menu. So I'm going to say something like protocol uh, change name or no change image delegate.
it is a type E controller. I think, why is it not? Oh, okay, lowercase speed. So this is a protocol that I'm defining in my cat, in my uh, cat present view controller, and I'm gonna call it function change image. And change image is gonna take in a name, that's a string. So this is that menu item that I was talking about earlier. I'm not gonna define it here. I'm just gonna say what it is. And it's gonna change the image, all right? So now that I actually made the menu in a sense, I want to now tell the view controller how to define this thing. How do, how do I actually do this change image thing? All right, so remember the only thing I added here is like the protocol in as a lot, it's, it's below the last parentheses of my class. So it's like here. So it's the very last thing. It's actually not in, in, your, in, your, in your closed brackets at all. So it's, it's its own thing. And then your controller, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom below the two to four. And you're gonna say extension, extension view controller is going to be change image delegate. Okay, and you, you might see an error like that. I'll stay here for a second. You might see an error and we wanna fix this error. So the way you fix errors in Swift, when you, when you finish typing this out, is you click on the error that you're getting and you, there's a button at the bottom right that says fix. You could click that and it'll automatically give you the fix that you need most of the time. So when I clicked fix, it gave me this function change image that I'm now gonna write. Like, like here I said what it is in my protocol. In my protocol, I said what this function was, but I'm not actually defining it. And my view controller is where I define it because this function eventually is gonna be the thing that changes that image A over there. It's gonna, it's gonna be the thing that changes like my image here. Oh, my image here to be the image that I clicked on in B. So now that I have this function and I have this name, assuming that I'm given like the name, the actually maybe I should call this image so it's consistent. Assuming that it's given some, oh, I gotta change. Oh, I gotta change this too. Image, sorry. Okay, so change this to image. So it's like, it makes more sense. It's a string in cat present view controller and then view controller. I'm going to I'm going to update the image of this of this view, right? So this view is called cat cat image button. So cat image uh button oh image button dot set image is going to be UI image named image four dot normal. So that named image, image is going to be like a string that's either going to be cat one, cat two, or cat three. Like literally those strings. Eventually that's what's going to be. But I didn't make it yet. I didn't call it or anything. I didn't, I didn't make it yet or anything. Another thing I want to point out is that I created an extension view controller called change image delegate. And the reason I did that was because usually when you make delegates, you want, you want the delegate code, you want this change image code to be separated from the rest of your code. Because you might have many different delegates for many different things. And you don't want them all like combined together. Because I could have also like added it here. I could have done I, I could have been like delegate change name delegate and then define the function within my view controller. But that's gonna add a lot of code eventually when we create more delegates. So for convention, the way we we activate this this delegate is we add this extension here at the bottom and say extension, the name of the class that I'm working in, which is the view controller. And then we, we say change image delegate. So we're saying view controller in this section of code is going to implement all of the all of the functions that are defined within change image delegate. And the only function that's been defined so far is this change image function. So I'm defining that within view controller. And now that I have defined it, um, I have to actually pass a reference of A into B. So moving, a, moving um, past this uh, view controller extension stuff, I gotta go back here in my present in my present function. So I call present and I'm presenting this, this cat present view controller uh, with a cat called cat. 
But the next thing I want to pass into this to this object is like a reference to this is a reference to the screen the view controller that I'm currently on. So I want to pass a reference to like A into B. So I'm going to do that by first changing the init function to require a delegate. So in this case, I'm going to, in my init function, within my cat present view controller, I'm going to add a comma. I'm going to add another parameter. And this is going to be delegate of type UI. Um, view. And I'm actually going to create a weak bar, oh, weak bar delegate, delegate of type change image delegate. Okay. So this delegate, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So that's a very, that's a very end of question. I don't think I have time to go into it right now, but trust me, we need that. Basically, it has something to do with how these views end up being like deleted. Um, because like whenever I push this view down, it's deleted, right? It's it's removed from memory. If I don't have that weak there, then basically that 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 this view, this present image view is or this present um view controller is not deleted. And that's bad because that means this app is gonna take up a lot of memory every time I click this button to present this view. So we actually want to make it weak. And that way we're not we're not wasting memory. That's that's kind of the crux. Um, but yeah, any, any other questions so far? Yeah. Sorry. We only, um, yeah, I'm going to go through this a bit quicker. We only have a bit left, so no worries, but yeah. So I added that delegate and I, I make this weak bar delegate. Um, I also make it optional because I want to set it up in here. I want to say self dot delegate. It is going to equal the delegate that I'm getting passed in. So this delegate, oh what? Um, oh, this should be change image delegate. Oh yeah. So I'm saying here, this delegate that I'm taking in is going to be which is going to be set equal to the delegate that I already have. So the delegate that I already have is going to take in this delegate in, in my init function. And it's going to set it equal to that delegate. That way I have a reference to that, to this view controller when I, when I'm on my cat present view controller, because eventually I want to call that function. I want to call this function, uh, change image. So first let me, let me go back here. So if you, as you can see, if you follow me step by step, you should have this error now in your view controller. And we, the way we want to fix this, you could, you could add it yourself or you could click on fix and it'll add the delegate itself. So it should look something like this. And then the delegate, like I said, the delegate in this case, you could think about the delegate as like a view controller. The delegate is gonna be self because I'm passing this view controller itself into my cat present view controller when I present it. I really hope this concept kind of sticks because this is gonna play throughout the rest of this course where we're talking about delegates, self, and how we pass delegates into like another view. So A, A is like the self over there. A is the self, and I'm passing the self into B. And that way B is able to reference things in, in A, things in, things in the self. And what I mean by reference things in the self, I'm gonna be referencing this change image function. I'm, I'm gonna be calling that using my delegate. So let me go back here. I added that code to my view controller. And then now it should be running. It should it should at least like be building, though it might not be. Yeah, so it'll be it'll build, but it, it's not changing the image yet. So we have to actually change this image. And how do we change this image? So if you go down to your cat button stuff, you'll notice that like we already have like the idea of how these buttons should work already laid out. We have the if sender dot tag. If center that tag is equal to one, like zero, one, or two. So we could differentiate between these functions. So that means that we could just call our delegate function within our if blocks. So on line 100, about 100, you should be able to say like delegate dot, and you'll see the first thing that comes up. Oh, whoops. Uh, delegate dot change image. Yeah. 
one of the functions that comes up when you when you start typing delegate dot change is that change image function that we defined here at the bottom. So now we can actually use the change image button and the image that we're going to be passing in the string is going to be cat one, right? Because we know this is the first button, so it's going to be cat one. And then the second button is going to be cat two. And then the third button is going to be cat three. So once you do this, and you click on the cat, it should change the cat. And your cat now, now you can change your, your cat to whatever you want. So that's cool. Um, is everybody up to this point? This is basically the end of the demo. Just want to make sure everybody has this. Because this is also going to be very important for the next project. This is basically one of the parts of the next project. So if you understand this and you're set for P3. Is everybody good? Yeah. Yeah, um, in this in this view controller. Okay, does anybody else want me to go back to any lines specifically? You good? You want me to zoom in more? Okay, come come up after and, and we'll get through it. Um, okay, but the last thing I kind of want to mention is that like these, when you click on one of these, right, it changes, which is good. Like if I change it to this, it's good. But when I click it again, it it, it goes back to the default image that I had before. And why why would this be happening? So this is happening because the way these images are loaded, the way the image is loaded into, into my cat present view controller is through this object called cat. And as you'll see, cat up here is never changed. This cat object never changes. It's always Kimba and cat three. It's always cat three. So whenever I click, whenever I click this image, it's always going to be presenting cat three in this new view controller. So to quickly change this, we already have cat here, right? What I'm going to create is now another variable. Um, var cat is a type cat. And I'm going to say self.cat is equal to cat. So now the cat I have here in my code is equal to the cat that I'm taking in. All right. And now that I added those two lines of code, I could go down here exactly to where I changed my buttons, to where I changed the the image, and I'm gonna say cat dot image is equal to cat one, and I'm gonna just copy and paste this, and I'm gonna say two three, and now that I did this, it should fix that error I had before. So now it loads all of the cats smoothly and exactly the way we want it to. And this goes back to the difference between classes and structs. So if you notice, I didn't, I made cat a class for a reason. So it's a class. So that means when I added these lines, cat.image and then cat.image and cat.image, I changed the class object. So I'm changing the same class here. I'm changing this cat. I'm, I'm, I'm referencing, we're both like, both A and B are ref referencing the same cat object. Even though this cat, this week, this var cat seems to be a whole other cat, but it's not, it's the same cat because classes are reference type. So this cat that I passed through when I pass the cat through on this line 24, I'm I'm now referencing the same cat as I was on in the view controller. So that's only because it's a class. If this were a struct now instead, 
You don't have to change it to a struct. I'm just showing it by example. If I change it to a struct, it'll still run exactly the same, except this time when I click on this image, it doesn't change. And that's exactly because of the difference between like structs being um, structs being value type and uh, classes being reference type. So if it's a class, if it's a class, this self.cat is referring to the same cat as the cat in my view controller because I'm passing that cat in. And so it works exactly like how we want it to. All right. So that's all I have for demo today. Um, we didn't get through everything that I wanted to. Like I didn't create a new view controller, but I'll post an extra video on that. Um, so really quickly. Oh yeah, does anybody have does anybody want me to go back to any code? No. Okay. If anybody has any issues with the code, uh feel free to come up to me after and we'll fix it. No worries. Um, but yeah, let's start this cuckoo. This code is like pretty short. So oh. Also, I really appreciate you guys coming in during prelim season. I know it's been a very hectic week for a lot of people. Um, yeah, I hope you guys learned something out of today. Today's one of my favorite lectures. I'll get started because I use them a lot. I use them like everywhere. So it's like once you learn this, you're, you're almost this is basically like more than half of app development, just understanding delegates and how to pass different objects between different views. So nice job for coming. Yeah. You mean like if there was another page C that B navigated to, and then you're trying to communicate between C and A? Uh, no, not necessarily. Like here, like B is just like going over. Over, it, yeah. What if it's not going over A? It's just totally different. So. In order to use delegates, there has there has to be some kind of navigation there, right? Because you have to create an instance of this of this view controller in order to actually use the delegate. So like I create an instance of B in A, right? So that's kind of how I'm able to pass the reference from A into B and then pass information basically from B into A. So there has to be some kind of navigation like that in order for there to be delegation. Um, but there's other forms of communication between screens. Delegation is just one of the main ones. So yeah, they're they're more we we talk more about after actually. But okay, I'm assuming this is everybody, so I'm gonna start it. Okay, there's gonna be images for this. So top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. The the red arrows represent the navigation, and then the black arrows represent what's the delegation direction? So red arrow is like, what's getting pushed on top of the next view? Yeah, yeah, that's that's totally right. Exactly like how the A and B is, is shown over there. Because we're presenting a view B on top of A, and then I'm delegating information from that push view B back into A. That's delegation. Uh, let me move myself. Okay, yeah, we just briefly talked about this, but classes again are reference type. Um, structs are our value type, meaning whenever you create a struct, whenever you create another reference to a, a struct, it creates a copy of it. Whereas when you create another, when when you create when you try creating a copy of a class, it creates another reference. So it doesn't actually make a copy, but it creates a reference to that same class. Yeah, huge shift.
Yeah. Yeah, it requires it. Yeah. Nice job, y'all. Wait, oh, one more, one more. I think it's the last one. I feel like the hardest part is always like thinking of an image for these cahoots. There's no, cause like, how do you create an image for value? I always mix up, mix that up. But this one makes sense cause it's pushing. So I thought it was like cooler. Wait, did it finish? What the fuck? Okay, yeah. So to go into this a bit more, um, this one has the question mark, the optional, which is not present in this one. Um, and it also has the parentheses here. So this, like I mentioned earlier, these parentheses are extremely important because if you don't have them, unlike this one on the bottom right, which doesn't have it, if you don't have it, then you're not really saying anything. Those two parentheses basically mean I'm creating an object of this view controller. I'm creating an instance of, saying that like example, I'm creating an instance of B when I tried presenting that that B through A. So I have to make I have to make an instance of my view controller in order to actually present it. Else, if I don't have it, that parentheses, then I'm talking about the type. And it makes no sense to push a type of a view controller. So yeah, that's all for today. Um